Well, guys, looks like there's more drama in Sens land. As we all know, the Ottawa Senators chose not to qualify Anthony Duclair. I think this is really interesting because the two sides, Pierre Dorian says they couldn't come to an agreement. I mean, I'm not sure how much Anthony Duclair was asking for. Was he asking too much? Did he overvalue himself, perhaps? But with the Sens, just, just, this just seems to be an ongoing issue. They have, uh, they're always butting heads with their star players, it seems like. Uh, Duclair was probably the most electrifying player, or at least forward, they had all year long last year. There wasn't really too many guys on that team that could do what he could do. So the fact that they're not qualifying him, I think, is is pretty bizarre. I mean, I would have never thought when I first read the headline yesterday. I was I was scrolling through Sportsnet and I first read the headline. I mean, I had to double, I had to take a double checking look there because it, it was just I couldn't. I was blown away. I couldn't believe Anthony Duclair wasn't being uh, tendered a qualifying offer for a guy of his caliber. I mean, I don't know. I I think it's bizarre. The Sens. They have this problem with their with their skilled players. You know, they seem to to not like skilled players for some reason. Obviously, because they cost more money. Melnick has a history of being a cheapskate, as we all know. I think a cheapskate is a good is a great name to call a hockey owner, especially because cheapskate. You know, hockey is cheap. And hockey wears skates. So, but anyways, corny jokes aside, I think. Um, is, is Anthony Duclair asking too much, or are the Ottawa Senators being too cheap? I, I mean, for Duclair, I look at him as a guy that it could be in the price range anywhere between three, third, three million, three point eight million to about four point six million. I don't really know if he's worth more than that. I, I, apparently, Pierre Dorian says they offered him a, a substantial raise over what he had last year. And by the way, Anthony Duclair did choose to represent himself. Pierre Dorian admonished him apparently that throughout the season that it is tough to represent yourself. I'm not really versed in the whole agency thing, you know, what, what goes on in contract negotiations. Obviously, I have a bit of an idea, as, as most of you probably do, but I wouldn't really know 100% obviously of what goes on there. With Pierre Dorian, though, I, I mean, is, is he just covering up for Melnick. I mean, I know I've been hard on Dorian in some of these videos, but is, is some of his decisions, his hand might be forced a lot by Eugene Melnick, perhaps. So with, with the Sens, I mean, they're very, they're very cheap, obviously, as we know. Melnick has a history of being cheap. He's cheaped out many times, obviously, with Mark Stone, Matt Duchesne, and, and people say, oh, well, we're rebuilding and stuff. Are we still rebuilding now that we're going to give up on a young guy like Anthony Duclair? He's 25 years old. He's in his prime. He skates like the wind. He's so he's such a dynamic player. He's got a terrific shot. I mean, to give up on a guy like this just just seems really odd. But with all that being said, the Sens do still have a chance to negotiate and sign Duclair, perhaps, as with him being an unrestricted free agent coming up on debt on uh, free agency day, I should say tomorrow. I mean, this this team is uh, they they got to get it together because their fan base is dwindling quick. Uh, hope for the fans is dwindling quick. They they need to get this this right, and the right thing is signing Anthony Duclair. I don't know what Duclair was was demanding. If he was demanding something like five six million, I mean, you should you should probably should let him walk. As good of a player as Duclair is, he does have deficiencies in his game, as we all know. His defensive game definitely lacks at times. I think he's a great player, but is he that that true superstar who can get you 70 to 80 points a year, a guy that is worth six plus million? I mean, uh, for him, he, he hasn't scored more than what was his career high in, in Arizona. 15, 16, he gets, he gets 44 points in 81 games. And after that, he's, he really struggled up until he had a decent stint with Columbus. Then he really took off in Ottawa. It seemed to be a great fit. Everything was just going fine. And I can't believe we're having this conversation today. I mean, I, I kind of can a little bit because it's the Ottawa Senators and anything seems possible with that team these last number of years. But Anthony Duclair, I mean, is he at fault in this too? I, I, I mean, I always kind of tend to take the players' side in situations like this because the Sens are known for being cheap. They just seem like this villainous organization towards skilled players. I, I just, 
I think they need to stop doing that. You're, you're going to chase off future star guys. We don't want any Eric Lindros situations where guys just really don't want to play for this team because of the owner, Eugene Melnick. Now, there are other notable RFAs on the board, too. Guys like Andreas Athanasiu, uh, Matt Benning, Troy Stetcher, uh, Brendan Perlini. There's a few other names, too, I can't think of off the top of my head, unfortunately, right now. But those are some guys maybe the Sens could look at to pursue to, to try and uh, fill the void of not having Duclair. I mean, Athanasiu was a 30-goal scorer, I believe, just a year ago. So with, with this is uh, going to be pretty intriguing to see how this plays out. And we'll see if, who scoops up Duclair tomorrow. I'm really hoping things come around and he's able to sign with the Sens. And I hope this organization can gain back some credibility if they do so. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, guys, please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.